Joining me today, I have Ingrid Koss uh, with Square One World Media. Ingrid, you know a lot of the history there, and that's been part of, uh, you know, what you've been doing for this documentary, getting ready for it, Back to Square One, a documentary. Uh, I would love to know, you know, in the synopsis, it says that this idea of spreading the good news initially back in 1947, 75 years ago, was a radical idea. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, at the time in 1947, radio was relatively new and it was certainly new to uh, the Mennonite community and so this was a group of um, Bible school students, uh, young young Bible school students uh, studying at Mennonite Brethren Bible College and uh, so their idea was that they could uh, reach more people through media, through radio, than they could one-to-one -one or in church settings. So they wanted to give it a try. They didn't really know anything about it, but they wanted to give it a try. And uh, yeah, it felt really radical at the time for a conservative um, ethno-religious group, right? So yeah, so they went out on a limb and they did it. And uh, 75 years later, we're still doing it and we're still trying to be radical and cutting edge with, uh, with our methods and our ideas and um, yeah, be effective. Fantastic. I would love to hear a little bit more about the documentary and what people can expect coming up. Wow, that's a big question. Um, I've been immersed in the process of making the documentary, so it's hard for me to be objective. But, um, you know, you start digging into the history of any organization and you find such fascinating things. You find the big picture of um, things that happened, one thing that led to the next that led to the next. And then you find the individual stories um, of people who who did amazing things or or just took such risks. Um, um, you know, their motivation for doing it was was not for money or for for fame, but but really for the glory of God. And so when i when I hear their stories or read read about their stories, see their pictures and stuff, I, I'm just so inspired, you know, that I, I want my life also to leave a legacy of, of doing something bigger, something something beautiful for God. So, oh, that doesn't really answer your question about what people can expect. I hope they also are inspired when they watch it by, by the passion that we can have uh, for the kingdom of God, by the, um, the bigger and more adventurous life we can live when, when we... Um, when we follow God's call in our life and don't know what the next step is going to be, but but just trust that uh, God will take care of us and God will lead us to to amazing experiences and uh, sharing the good news of Jesus. So good. I would love to hear a little bit more about when the name changed as well. Maybe this is two parts, but as well when... Um, you, the company decided to start branching out further and then you've got, you know, programs in Russian and programs in um, the different languages. You've got low German, you've got all these different things. Yeah, if you can talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it started out as one English language program uh, being broadcast on one radio station in Winnipeg. And um, uh, actually the beginning of CFAM is what helped it branch out into several additional languages uh, over time. Um, well, the name changed. It started out as Gospel Light Hour. That was um, early on that became the name. Uh, then it became Mennonite Brethren Communications in the 70s. And then it became Family Life Network. Uh, and more recently, it became Square One World Media. So we have had four name changes, which uh, are explained in the documentary. <laughs> Uh, you know, the reason behind each switch. And also, I think it means that people will say, oh, I didn't realize this was Gospel Light Hour, or I didn't realize this was MB Communications. So I think, you know, people will connect to the different names, um, the different programs. Um, I think one of the surprising answers that I got, I was asking that same question, how did, how did it become, uh, you know, so many different languages? And I thought it would be, you know, some amazing, you know, God moment where, you know, God called someone. Uh, 
And the only answer I got, someone said, um, well, we moved into a bigger building and we had more room. And uh, <laughs> so that is uh, that is a God moment as well, right? God providing the bigger building, uh, providing the momentum to, to build a bigger building. And that led to new opportunities. So um, um, I think the way different language uh, programs come about or, or just new ideas for different programs, it comes uh, from somebody who has a passion to share the gospel with their own people group. And they come and they say, hey, you know, do you think we could make a, a, a radio program with you? Or do you think we could do something on YouTube with you? Or do you think, you know, whatever it is, whatever their idea is, and then, then it gets explored. And if it's, um, if it, um, if it fits with what we, what we can do, uh, then it becomes a partnership and, uh, a new language is added or just a new program in an existing language that we're already working with. Very neat. Um, yeah, would you mind talking a little bit briefly about the history between Square One World Media and Golden West? Mm -hmm. uh, one of our, I think the earliest leader, the technical director or that we had was John Pauls. And uh, he also, I believe, was the first um, radio technician at uh, CFAM. And uh, so from what I've been able to understand about the beginnings of CFAM is that it was started uh, as a way to, uh, as young people from the Mennonite communities in southern Manitoba, as they were moving into the city, uh, they wanted to still maintain that uh, that cultural and religious connection. And that was one of the motivations for starting CFAM in um, 1957, I believe. And so John Pauls, as someone, I don't know what his background was, what his training was, uh, but he was already involved at Gospel Light. He was already the lead technician uh, here at Gospel Light. And uh, so he became the first um, technician at CFAM, maintained the connection with uh, Gospel Light and um, several of our early sound technicians um, worked at CFAM before they came here or worked here, volunteered here, and then went to CFAM. So, so there's a strong connection that way. Uh, also, uh, Gospelite was uh, producing programs that really fit what CFAM wanted to put on the radio. They wanted to have religious programming and they wanted to have... Um, excellence in music, uh, sacred music, and um, classical music. And uh, so Gospel Light was producing programs that really fit. And um, so there was a connection made there. Amazing. I would love to hear from you. Is there, I know it's hard to probably bring it down to just one, but in the past research that you've been doing for this documentary, were there like potentially one fascinating story that really impacted you um, about the way that your company has done radio ministry and entertainment in this, uh, ministry in this way? I think the whole picture inspires me. Um, just, just the gentle and consistent leading of God that people are, um, the right people are found, or not, not the right people, effective people are found for the for the next next step, um, I think one thing that is amazing to me is uh, when COVID started, uh, media became really the main way to connect, and uh, just seeing how God has led over the years that uh, all of our ministries were on social media, they're all, they were all online, and uh, you know we weren't planning what will we do if a pandemic comes but when the pandemic came we were already there and so um that's just one one way that you see how god goes ahead god prepares the way and without us even knowing um in so many ways we were prepared for that moment beautiful is there anything else that you wanted to share about your time at square one world media or even the documentary, or the past 75 years. Yeah, well, for me, I love I love history. Um, for me, it's a dream come true to dig into the archives and and research those people, put some faces to to names, um, 
I find that kind of thing really, really fascinating to bring bring the dry facts to life. And so for me, it's it's truly a dream come true to be to be able to uh, make a film like this documentary. Um, I've loved working with people who have um, different strengths from me. So, um, you know, working together as a team and uh, just been truly enjoyable to see what God has done.